I never wound up reviewing the Emoji movie, mostly because it wasn't pre-screened for press in my area, and there was other stuff out that week anyway. And while I know a lot of people have been asking me if I'd review it because supposedly it was so bad that critics all over the spectrum have turned reviewing it into some kind of open mic free verse exercise, when I finally saw it, I just didn't have really all that much to say about it. That's not to say it's not a bad movie, it's pretty bad. Generic looking, shallow, derivative, stiflingly unfunny. But for all the sport that the film press has been making of laying into it with ever more creative insults and a general sense of apocalyptic turning pointism that had been affixed to it even a week later, I was expecting some kind of uniquely, transcendently terrible work. Maybe not The Room or Plan 9 or anything like that, but at least a misbegotten horror show like Pixels or the Baby Geniuses movies of Batman v Superman. But instead, the Emoji movie is just a normal bad movie. Bad, yeah, but only just bad in the way a thousand other middling, forgettable, dumb movies are. Its biggest crime is that it's hopelessly generic and flat, built around easy jokes and tacky pop culture references. And in that respect, it doesn't really feel appreciably worse than a lot of other bad kids' movies. It's really no worse than the live-action Smurfs movies, the solo Minions spin-off, or in the broader sense even this year, it's only just about the same kind of bad as The Mummy or the Fifth Pirates movie. So what's the deal with all the vitriol? Why is this particular below-average disposable movie engendering so much genuine hatred, not just from the film press, but the general pop culture punditry discourse in general? Now, caveat, I tend not to be on board whenever this or that movie becomes the designated film critic punching bag that it's okay to pile on and start trying to one-up each other with how much creative bile we can lob in its direction, both because it soon stops being about the merits or lack thereof of the actual film, and because it almost always winds up directed at quote-unquote bad films that either take ambitious, risky creative directions and don't quite stick the landing, like Freddy Got Fingered, or films that are not good, but also not good in an uncool, non-zeitgeisty sort of way like Batman and Robin. That's just never been my scene. But in the case of this emoji business, I was mostly just bored. I can't find anything to get worked up about. Like I said, it's just a generic bad kids movie, and we don't get bent out of shape over every single one of those. It's blatantly little more than a commercial for various officially licensed smartphone apps that have paid to have their brand be part of the storyline. I mean, yeah, okay, but it kind of feels like a strange time to get hung up on that, what with the heaps of praise that the Lego movies unironically earn, and if being a literal commercial was automatically preclusive to a film being innately beyond redemption, a ton of people in my generation wouldn't still be going on about how sad they were when Optimus Prime died 30 years after the fact. Again, this is not a defense of the Emoji movie, it's a question. Why did this particular not very good, tacky, disposable, cynically commercial Hollywood assembly line homunculus get singled out as having crossed the line from bad to harbinger of the apocalypse? And I think the answer has less to do with the nearly non-existent, just to be clear, merits of the film and more to do with who it's about and exclusively aimed at, namely those damn kids. The Emoji movie is laser targeted at smartphone generation grade schoolers. There's no Pixar baby boomer nostalgia, no Lego movie Gen X nostalgia, no Wreck-It Ralph gamer culture shoutouts, no attempt either thematically, narratively, or culturally to appeal to the sensibilities of anyone other than this first generation of preteens whose social lives and pop cultural engagement are centered almost entirely around their mobile devices, a state of being that the film presents as an utterly uncritical, neutral fact of life. Like there's no scene about learning to put down your phones, or communicating the old-fashioned way, or anything that would indicate that there's something wrong with being glued to your phone all day as an American grade schooler in 2017. In other words, if you're already of the disposition that Generation Mobile constantly being buried in their screens, communicating with each other in the shared languages of Twitter, YouTube, Spotify, and memes via streams of branded cartoon hieroglyphs are the most annoying humans ever, well, the Emoji Movie offers up a 90-minute punching bag for you to project all of that rage, annoyance, and generational I'm-getting-old disdain onto. It's the same principle by which bad comic book movies tend to become sinkholes for certain critics to unload their misgivings about the entire broader superhero genre, or how a good movie like Scott Pilgrim nonetheless drew plenty of reviews that were more about venting frustrations with millennial hipsters than about the movie itself. And I honestly think that's kind of unfortunate, because even though stuff like the Emoji Movie is complete garbage, basically from its inception point, and Hollywood does indeed make way, way too much of it, another thing we've gotten more than enough of at this point is rambling screeds from out-of-touch critics grousing about how lazy, stupid, spoiled, or perplexing their grandkids are. Hey gang, here's a question that keeps coming up. If your handle is Movie Bob, where are your movie reviews? Well, my old reviews are in a lot of places. You'll find many of them on my YouTube channel, but you'll find the brand new ones on Geek.com, an awesome site that's also your one-stop news source for science, TV, gaming, technology, nerd culture, the works. You can find all my reviews directly by going to Geek.com slash author slash B Chapman, because that's my real name, and you can get regular updates on all my reviews and all of Geek.com's other great content by signing up for their kick-ass newsletter at subscribe.geek.com. 
And don't forget to also subscribe to the Geek.com YouTube channel, where you'll find the videos that accompany my reviews and tons of other great content, too. Remember, that's Geek.com, the Geek.com newsletter, and Geek.com on YouTube. Make sure you don't miss out on all the latest Movie Bob reviews. You can also check out my own new website, Movie Bob Central, where you'll find my blog, links to all my work, and shop for my books, ebooks, and future Movie Bob products. And please remember to like these videos, share them with all of your friends, and subscribe to this channel. Thank you for watching another Movie Bob production.